we're going to take a moment to look at the relationship between explicit formulas and recursive formulas. Here, we're asked to write an explicit formula for the following recursive formula. And that recursive formula is u sub 0 is 5, which is the initial value, the starting value. And then it says u sub n equals u sub n minus 1 plus 3. Now, that's a little harder to comprehend, but remember what we said that u sub n, we read that as sort of any element of the series, of the recursive sequence. And u sub n minus 1 means just the one that is previous to that. Or it's just I sometimes say the previous one. OK, so to work with this, um, I'm going to take a look at this in sort of two fashions. I'm going to look at sort of a, a longer way here, just to give you some explanation, then hopefully a keep it simple way over here, which is hopefully um, what you'll derive from this mini lesson and be able to go right from here to here with great ease. Okay, but we want to see why this actually works. Okay, I'm going to take a minute and look at the longer way there. So I'm going to uh, generate the first couple uh, elements of this sequence. So I'm going to start with um, you sit in to start out. The first one is going to be 5. And then I'm supposed to, by looking at the common difference, to get the next one to add 3 to the previous one, which in this case will be 5. Give me 8. Add 3 again to give me 11. Add 3 again to give me 14. And it would continue on. Okay. Just for greater clarity, I'm going to write the index numbers under this. The index numbers are just the position in the sequence um, that the number resides in. So here, n equals 0. Okay. And we should be able to see that um, u sub 0 was the first element of the series. Okay. So this is going to be the first or the one position, which is oddly enough the second, but don't let that fray because we're starting at zero. This is the second, this is the third, and they will continue on in infinity. Okay, now I'm going to try and write some relationships between n and u sub n. Okay, so if we notice here, what I tried to do was I wrote the first term, and then I added the common difference, in fact, zero times. I know it sounds a little weird to have added it zero times, but it's going to make more sense this language as I can create a pattern here. Okay? And in this next element, I started with the common, I started with the initial value, sorry, and then I added the common difference one time. This next one, I started with the initial value, and then I added the common difference two times, as evidenced by the fact that here I added three twice. And then in the next one, you notice I add three three times. So let's take a look and say, start with five and add three three times. Well, if I look very carefully, there's a relationship here between the index and the only variable thing in this little expression that I'm writing. And if you notice here, the index number is the number that I'm multiplying by in this expression. So here where it was 1, I multiplied by 1. Here where it was 2, I multiplied by 2. Here where it was 3, I multiplied by 3. And again, if you notice these little expressions that I'm writing, the only place where there is something that's varying is in the part that I highlighted. Well, I think I should be able to write this in a simpler fashion of saying that, excuse me, with the highlighter, that use of n, any value in the series, in the sequence, okay, is equal to the initial value plus the common difference, in which case would be minus if that difference were negative, 
times the index value of that number in the series. So for instance, it should make sense that if I wanted to compute use of 4, I would do 5 plus 3 times 4. And that would give me, excuse me, we'll misspeak here with my equal sign, use of 4 equals 5 plus 3 times 4. And that would in fact give me 5 plus 12 is 17. So if you notice too, I think it would make sense to say that 17 is the next value in that sequence. So this formula seems to work. So you really want to put your focus right here at this point. For the keep it simple part. So what is the relationship here? Well, in an explicit formula, it's very simple. The initial value becomes the constant term. And now we have that the constant difference becomes the multiplier of the index. So for instance, if you had write an explicit formula for the following recursive formula, it would be to say that use of n, excuse me, use of n is equal to, again, the initial value is the constant term. And then we're going to use the common difference as the multiplier. And then for the index value. Okay, I can clean that up a little bit where I don't need the 1. You can get 10 minus n. So you watch this video again. Focus on the keep it simple part. I hope that um, what I explained there is uh, you know, beneficial for you to make the, the quick move to get the problem right. Again, where this is the constant term in terms of the initial value is the constant term. And the common difference becomes a multiplier. to create an explicit formula that is equivalent to the recursive formula. And then you can use that explicit formula to find a member, uh, a number uh, in the series. If you want to find the 25th member, uh, n will be 25. Uh, if you want to find what position in the series or formula that uh, 138 lives at, you would use that as the use of n and find him.